You're watching Meet the Movie Press, and coming up, we're going to be talking about James Bond, Jordan Peele, and Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume Dose. Welcome to Popcorn Talk, featuring movie discussion, news, and interviews. Popcorn Talk, we talk movies. And now, here's Popcorn Talk's Meet the Movie Press. Hello. Oh, good morning, Simon. Oh, no, mate, you sound like you're from London. How are you, buddy? I'm good. Uh, it's nice to be back. I missed you last good week. Good to have you back. Mm. My name is Jeff Snyder. You are watching Meet the Movie Press. Uh, I'm the editor-in-chief of the Tracking Board. Tracking oh, hyphen board.com uh, and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at, at the insider with me as always it's Simon Thompson hello there um, some people are happy to see me back not everybody but uh, yeah that one guy in the comment section the, screw the one that guy. guy yeah fuck that guy hey uh, we, we yeah. love Brienne Chandler around here thank you to lovely uh, to have her on I watched the yeah, show thanks Brienne for filling yeah, in but awesome. Simon has returned hey you've got to up the bold quota um, if you want to see more of my bald head or I think it was a, an egg head someone called it this week uh, you could find me on Twitter um, at showbiz Simon Instagram at showbiz Simon I also have a Facebook page uh, this is Simon Thompson wonderful a mm, lot going on this week uh, yeah, 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 I guess. Yeah. It was a busy week, yeah. and, and, and we averted a crisis. We did. Right a strike. Yep. Over. I was up late that night. Yeah, I, I think can it imagine. was like, you know, one in the morning when, when the white smoke came out of uh, the headquarters or <laughs> the wherever the hell they the were negotiating. Pope. Right. And, uh, yeah. And yeah, they, they reached a deal. So good for, for the writers. Because we mean, genuinely thought there was going to be a strike. It looked very likely. I know. I, I was on the show predicting that there wasn't going to be a strike. Mm. Uh, I thought I thought that they lost a lot the okay. last go around, and it really hurt Hollywood and yep. the California economy. And I just didn't see what they had to gain necessarily by striking. Um, Michael Bay had a couple of movies that he could have got greenlit without scripts. Sure. So yeah. they, they, you know, they they got the health insurance fixed. That yep. was a big uh, problem for the writers. Big deal right now. Uh, they made some incremental gains on the TV side. I mean, mm -hmm. if you're a film, uh, a screenwriter, you know, it didn't really affect you that much. The new, the new deal, but uh, TV writers, you know, th that that was really the the big issue on the table. Sure. Um, so yeah, I'm glad the things can move on because yep. God knows. Uh, well, it, it, if that what we would have been subjected to. Strikes in the past have never really worked out well, create. Activity wise, no for audiences. I mean, no. they've still gone and see the movies, but it hasn't really worked out well for audiences. So, you okay? Yeah, no. I saw this thing swinging back there. I thought it was a spider. <laughs> I know you don't like spiders. You'd have to kill it for me. You don't. Okay. Uh, don't worry, right. I've got this. So, uh, WGA AMPTP. Mm. Congrats to them. And now we can talk about the real deal. Yeah. Movie stuff. Let's talk about it. And the thing that everybody was talking about this week. Mm -hmm. For whether there was reason to or not, was the James Bond franchise. Yeah. Rumors uh, stemming from Syncopy, mm -hmm. uh, or Syncopy, or however the fuck you're pronouncing Christopher Nolan's production company name, they yep. were listed on IMDb mm -hmm. as the production company for Bond 25, and people took this as some sort of confirmation that, that Christopher Nolan, Nolan was... was, in fact, involved yeah. uh, in the movie. We also got rumors that... Paul McGuigan could be directing. Yeah, um, who made probably best known for Lucky Number Eleven. Yeah, which which I says a lot. I didn't like. I mean, it would be interesting if they do take it down an indie director route. And he did uh, Push, yeah. right, with Chris and Evans. He's done some shit. Did he do I Frankenstein? Or, I don't know about I that one. Oh. Maybe. Yeah. I don't, I, I, I don't know. Uh, he did. But he's certainly not like a, a, a. Or maybe he just did Frankenstein. Or the uh, the the, he, the Daniel the Radcliffe, Radcliffe yeah. and yeah. yeah he did that I think yeah that was uh, what the fuck Frank anyways yeah. these are not great movies no. I don't know where Paul uh, no. I don't know where Paul McGuigan's name came out of I don't know um, I know he's done with. a lot of good work on television but I would be shocked if he got the job I would be very surprised and I know that uh, the Broccoli family they have gone the indie route before with mm. Mark Forster yeah. But again, how well did that really work out? But again, Quantum of Solace, I mean, it's a Bond film that is not the best Bond film by any stretch, but I actually quite enjoyed it. But again, that was a, a film that was affected by a strike. Right. Yeah, so you're right. you can't entirely lay the blame at his feet no. as the director. No. But it hasn't worked out well. Yeah. Uh, so, so, but let's talk, let's get into like the Chris Nolan, sure. Tom Hardy of it sure. all. Sure, yeah. Could there, I mean, do you, 
I know that Chris Nolan is a huge Bond fan. Yeah. He grew up watching those movies. Yeah. It makes sense that he would do one of them, but did you interpret that IMDb listing as like legitimate or is this all cause, you know, uh, No, I mean, if you if you take that as an example of, of, of a well-known director who has a production company that is linked to making a movie, how many times do the likes of uh, Brad Pitt when his production company gets attached to a movie doesn't necessarily mean that Brad Pitt's going to direct it. I wouldn't read too much into that. I mean, I would be very so you open. Think, you think they could potentially be uh, producing Chris and, Chris and Emma, but not he won't necessarily direct? Like, it's just like a... Yeah, I think that would be an creative option. imprint? Yeah, I mean, just because your, your production company is attached doesn't mean you have to direct. I mean, Reese Witherspoon, again, production company, she hasn't directed all the movies that have been attached to that company. I mean, I would be very, very open well, to Chris She's not a director, Nolan. she produces. Yeah. I, th- I think that if... I'd be open to it. If he was idea. producing the movie, he would be directing it. That's what I think. I, I, I think he'd... Yeah, I mean, I would assume that would go hand in hand, but I wouldn't necessarily take that as a given. I mean, we have the likes of Ridley Scott, who produces a lot of movies, but doesn't necessarily direct them, mm-hmm. which he very, you know, he very ably could direct See, a lot I, of stuff. I, that I think, produces. actually, you know, as far as, like... Because the directors who come on to this franchise, mm. I don't think that they necessarily do bring their whole production companies like i don't know no. if uh sam mendez's paper street or whatever it is no but there's no there's no uh, hard i don't, and I don't fast. know if that was a production company on it i think that chris nolan and ridley scott are actually two of the only directors yeah. who would get that kind of benefit yeah uh but i think bond in itself as a, as a, as a film is, and as a franchise is a very unique entity so i think really when you're entering into the bond universe kind of you know the writing's on the wall to to quote Sam, um, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't that necessarily good. mean that all, thank you so much, uh, it doesn't mean the rules apply. I think it's kind of like everything is out the window. It's it's a different ball game, the Bond stuff. So the, th- the thing about Bond, okay, so there mm. is no director. Yeah. Uh, they are having the, the there is, they are working on a script. It's the, uh, they the are, guys yeah. who, right, the guys who we've written the last few. There's still no studio. The last we heard, you know, the New York Times had that big story yep. with all the different studios making yeah, their presentations. Ago, yeah. Uh, right, we haven't heard any follow up since, and then there's the uh, the talk of casting. Yeah. So, I think that they've got a good thing going with James uh, Daniel Craig. Yep. And if they if he wants to come back, they would gladly have him back for I think one so. more movie. Yeah, I think that's true. But let's say they just are like you know we're ready to move on, mm-hmm. we're ready to re- reboot the franchise with this new studio and a new director. Yeah. Let's let's recast. Um, you know, given the the Nolan stuff that was in the news, there was speculation about Tom Hardy, mm-hmm. and I was actually reading the Ankler, which I've told everyone great to subscribe to Richard yes, Rushford's newsletter. newsletter. And in in his newsletter, he links to an IndieWire story mm-hmm. where Ann Thompson's talking about uh, whether Tom Hardy would do it, and he says that he hears that the rumor about Tom Hardy playing James Bond is actually more than a rumor, okay. and that it's a done deal. Okay, and I wouldn't put it past CAA to have struck that deal. I think Tom Hardy is in high demand. He doesn't do a lot of these franchise yep. titles. Yep. I mean, Dunkirk is obviously a huge movie, but it's not, you know, the branded sort of IP. And if Nolan's going to come on board as director, if that is on the table, right, that then obviously that sense. would make that would make t- yeah. perfect sense. So, uh, But I do think that there could be some sort of, like, side deal or whisper deal yeah. for Tom Hardy where he's like, listen, Daniel Craig is our Bond as long as he wants to be, but once he is not, you're mm. the guy. So mm. just keep that in mind. Yeah. Um, and I think that that would be great. I would be very much he's, on board with that. He's a brilliant that. actor. Yeah, I mean, like I said previously, I think Daniel Craig is... Uh, I mean, I, I've really enjoyed him as Bond. I think he's been great. But I think that has kind of, for me, uh, as, a, as an audience member, that's kind of closure with the last film. Yeah, if he didn't come back, I wouldn't have an issue with that. I, I, I would welcome I, him I back. I think it's time. But I think it's time. I think it's time to move on. I, I and agree. I think Tom Hardy's a really good... Um, w- would be a really good choice. I don't think if there's actually a lot of other choices... When I survey the landscape, or I think you know, think of all the names who have been rumored for Bond, people like Jack Houston or Idris Elba. That's not going to happen. I, That's I, not I don't happen. see it. Uh, and, Kevin and, Hart. Well, a real quick aside. Yeah. Since, since I just uh, name checked Idris Elba, did you see that Dark Tower trailer this I week? I did. What do you think of this movie? Uh, do you know what? I'm I'm looking forward to it. That trailer didn't really do it for me. No. Um, it felt a little bit like. The last action hero. It felt too much like a kid on an adventure type movie that we used to see in the 80s and 90s. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm absolutely going to go and see this film. I am looking forward to it. That trailer just did not 
I'm going to see this movie too because this is considered King's masterwork. Yeah, but and he's endorsed it. He's very much behind this. What, what, what do we expect from these authors, though? Of course he's going to endorse it. Well, no, I mean, of course but, he is. No, but he's turned around, you know, after many, many Stephen King adaptations and gone, that's whole shit. So he doesn't always throw his weight behind stuff. I mean, him stuff. criticizing The Shining, is a, it's, a different, it's a different landscape mm. these days in terms of Twitter and social media and the way the studios involve the yeah. authors. And uh, there was no way, if he didn't like it, he was going to come out and say that. So his, in, his endorsement doesn't really go do but anything for me. I thought just the, didn't. I don't think the movie really. It doesn't have that hook for me. Yeah. Um, it wasn't enough of anything for me to really go. Oh. Yeah. It just at the moment maybe it's holding back. It that's didn't. That's true. You know, M- McConaughey just he looks like he's sleepwalking through this thing. I don't like his his look. Uh, the kid doesn't look particularly involved. I thought the script was a little bit contrived. Well, oh, you've read the script? No, 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 no. I mean, from from what obviously you hear the dialogue in in the trailer, I uh, was just a bit like, that seems a little bit twee. I don't know who it's credited to. If it's still like you know a, a Kiva's draft or, or yeah. whatever, but eh, this, this, I mean, I, I've never really been excited uh, about this project, and I, and I do consider myself a King fan, but I've never read these books. No, I, I haven't. I mean, and I don't want to. I want to go into it completely blind it's not um, it's not based on any one book either it's like no, an amalgamation i, of I understand from they've kind of books. muddied they've muddied the waters and then obviously the the option to then make two or three of these films would be on the table but i'm it, right now i mean i i will go and see it but I, it's not a film that i'm particularly excited about yeah which is a shame because i was expecting something that well, would really grab me you at, know? Le- at least this has a relatively modest budget for sony yeah uh, and, it's not and, huge and won't and won't kill them so what do you think sort of box office wise we're looking at with with a return on that kind of film oh i i don't i'd have to see like what it's going it's it's august yeah august i think is, it's gonna be i think it's gonna do okay august. i think august it's gonna be like wasteland i think it's gonna be fine but i don't think it's gonna be a like oh that's a runaway success yeah no we'll, we'll see it could it could have legs because august yeah. is so weak um, <clears throat> all right, let's move it along. Let's talk about Jordan Peele. Yeah. Jordan Peele signing an exclusive first look deal with Universal. Yep. Which made it get out, of course. Uh, and he is going, it's going to be another like uh, untitled social thriller. He's going to write, direct, produce. His yep. budget is going to uh, multiply by about five. Mm-hmm. So he's moving from about five million to 25 million, give or take. Which uh, is still not a massive budget in Hollywood. No, it it still That's gives him the freedom to yeah. go and do what he wants, yeah. uh, and and they won't really sweat it. Uh, you know, I think Boris had the exclusive on this uh, over at the Hollywood Reporter, and he had said, you know, all the studios were chasing Peel. Yeah. Uh, when a guy makes a movie for five million dollars and it has that kind of profit, everybody wants to be in business with him. Um, but Universal convinced him to come back into the the fold, staving he, off Warner Brothers. He's got such a strong relationship with uh, with Universal, and I, okay, <clears throat> this has not been put out there. This has not been confirmed. It's not even been suggested. But Ooh. you know, I'm a fan of of Halloween Horror Nights at Universal. Yes. Yeah, I'm gonna put twenty dollars on the table and say that Get Out is gonna be one of the mazes this year. A Get Out maze. A Get that Out maze. That would be really creepy. That would work. Absolutely brilliantly. Like the sunken place? Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. You could do all sorts of stuff with that. That would be absolutely brilliant. I know they're working on the mazes right now. I'm going to put that, I think, get out. Because he's got such a, a strong relationship. And they're actually doing a, a launch for the for the Blu-ray next week on the back lot at Universal. Um, oh, right. They're having a little garden party. Garden party. I'm sending yeah. a, uh, my critic there. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm going to attend that next week. And I'm just thinking they are so close to that movie. And that's been such a big success. I think that's what we're going to see as one of the mazes this year. Uh, I would I would just say my note on this, you know, obviously I, I was the one who put out the Akira thing yeah. um, that Warner Brothers really wanted Jordan Peele for that. Uh, I think it's a good thing that he is resisting going that big blockbuster tentpole route and he's continuing to do his own thing. Uh, I think he took a month after Get Out to sort of see, you know, what yep. do I want to do? Do I want to stay true to this this path that I'm trying to blaze and tell these stories that nobody else is really not only trying to tell, but able to tell. Yeah. Um, well, it took him five years to make Get Out. Well, sure. Yeah. You know, he, he sat on that for, for five years, so it's a long time, so he's not afraid to sit and wait. Listen, I, I'm glad he's not directing Akira. I'm glad he's not directing The Flash. I actually think uh, Jordan Peele's Uptown Saturday Night would have been really cool over yep. at Warner Brothers, that, yep. that remake. 
uh, if you'd p- paired like Jordan Peele with Denzel or Will Smith or something. But uh, but yeah, more more power to him. I am a genre fan. I love horror movies and thrillers. Yep. So uh, keep them coming. So is it going to be Get Out to Get In? Mm, I don't know. I don't even know if we'll see any of the same cast. Yep. Um, yeah. But that, that little, would be interesting, though, if he does use uh, kind of like, like the American sequel? Horror Story kind of idea of, of having the same cast but recast them in different characters. That might be an interesting idea. Yeah, maybe. I could see that. I mean, he had a great cast in Get Out. Strong so why, cast. Why not use really, it again? really good. So. All right. Uh, before we talk Guardians, okay. let's real quick uh, just mention this Dick Cheney movie. Yeah, Dick a- Pick. Adam- <laughs> I'm still it, calling it the Dick Pick. That's what it should be called. Yeah. Uh, the dick pick. The dick pick. Uh, got dropped by Paramount this week. It did. And moved over to Annapurna, which just signed a new three-year deal with Brad Pitt's company, Plan B. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, the movie is sort of coming along with, with Brad Pitt's company. And it. I don't know if it's going to be ready in time for the fall. Uh, I think that they said that it is that they are, they are shooting for that. Um, it's going to be quite tight, though. And, and the cast is now confirmed. Christian Bale, Amy Adams, Steve Carell. Mm. But... Buried in, I think it was Hollywood Reporter story. Uh, it was either Hollywood Reporter or Variety. I forget. Fifty million dollars. Fifty million dollars is the budget for this Dick Cheney movie. That is almost That's double a, the yeah. budget of The Big Short. Mm. Which, as I explained in my column on the tracking board and here on the show, uh, you know, the week that that news broke, maybe that movie made twenty million dollars. You know, when yeah. you factor in an expensive awards campaign and all that stuff. Um, and Dick, the Dick Cheney movie, I'm just like, this never struck me as a good idea, especially given Paramount's new creative mandate. Yeah. So I'm not surprised to see them let it go. Uh, I, I do think that it could perform closer to W yes. than The Big Short, which had huge movie stars in it. Obviously, this does too with Christian Bale. But Dick Cheney isn't really as well known as George W. Bush. No, I mean, it's, it's always, I mean, I love watching these political movies. I, I always have done since I was a kid. But there are, they are a difficult sell to the audience. People don't turn out right. in their droves. I mean, aside from, say, the likes of JFK, audiences just, they don't, I mean, a lot of people don't engage with the, politics full well, stop. It's, but it, it's not a... It's not even that. It's, it's they don't travel. People yeah. overseas don't want to go no. see movies about American politicians. And as we've discussed, it's increasingly important for the overseas market. We're seeing like an almost 70% overseas yield on these things now. I I mean, I don't... I mean, unless they go down the... Rather than theatrical, they put it as like a Netflix or... An, they, that's me. To, to, that to me, it strikes me thing. as like an HBO movie, like a yeah. game change sort of thing. Yeah. I just think a, a young, hungry indie filmmaker would make a Dick Cheney movie for 10 to $20 million. I love Adam McKay, uh, yeah, but, he's a but, brilliant but filmmaker. fifty million dollars for a Dick Cheney movie, uh, man! I'm sure sh- I'm shocked Anna Perna's even doing this one. I'm assuming that that's going to go mostly on cast, though, rather than because v- visually, there's not. You're not going to see that money on the screen, if you know what I mean. I mean, I don't know if Christian Bale is getting <clears throat> his whatever his quote is, yeah, $10 million, fifteen million. But that's also, it's a weird window. I would probably release that in a January. I would. Yeah, I, I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put a going into the holidays. It, it kind remains of to be that. seen if that will be ready yeah. in time okay. for uh, this award season. All right, Guardians two. Yeah, give us. We're gonna talk. Okay. About, we can finally talk about what we, we thought about yeah. the movie because it is now out. Yeah, but before we get into our respective takes, yeah. Give me the box office breakdown. Uh, okay, so Guardians last night previewed here in the US. Obviously, it opened internationally last weekend. Uh, it's taken 17 million on its Thursday, uh, which is which is fine, which is good. Uh, in terms of where that ranks with all the other box office movies from Marvel, uh, Ultron is still biggest previews, 27.6. Uh, then it is Civil War, which is 25. Uh, then it's Avengers, which is 18.7. So this is then in fourth place. That makes sense, though. It does. That's still sense. a good showing. Yeah, and there's some really interesting stats, actually. I um, I was looking at a uh, a piece online, actually, from Deadline Hollywood, and they were looking at audience reactions to this. It gets 84% on uh, on Rotten Tomatoes, which I think is about fine. Uh, 72% recommending to friends. But they did some audience research. Uh, 58% uh, of the crowd bought tickets because they were fans of the original movie. 53 came because they liked Marvel movies, while 40% attended for the cast as a whole. Um, and when it comes to sort of watching again, um, 30% of Thursday's audience uh, would like to see the sequel again. 31% would buy it on Blu-ray and 20% want to own it on DVD. So it seems that the audience uh, are enjoying it, but it's not. it doesn't have 
the pow that the first one had. It seems that people are not engaging with it in the same way. Now, obviously, after we saw the movie, we kind of agreed that it was um, it, it's a good movie, but it's not as good as the original, and, it, and it's certainly flawed. Yeah. Um, we're seeing more people of that opinion sort of come out of the woodwork over mm-hmm. the last week, which which is good because that kind of endorses the way that we're thinking. It makes me uh, think I'm not crazy. Yeah, it's just it's nice to know that other people feel the same way. I mean, we're not afraid to obviously express our own opinions, but um, I, I think it's going to do... I mean, it is going to do really well. I can see it very easily making a billion dollars, but I don't think it's going to have the legs or the excitement that I think the first one had. It In terms of box office? Yeah. Or rea- oh, see, I disagree. I mean, the first one opened to 94. Yeah. And I think this is going to open to like 150. So I think that. Like, yeah, I think it's. Uh, but I think it's not going to. It's not going to have the legs that the first one had. I think there was a lot of because it was an unknown quantity. There was a lot of word of mouth. A lot of people going, "We're going to get on board this one." And I think this is going to have the initial people who who really want to go and see it. And I think it's going to do a lot up front. But I think that back end sales, it's going to. Yeah. Not be as as strong as perhaps the first one. I'll put it this way: I uh, I, I did some box office contests with the guys from Slash Film yesterday, okay. and I and yeah. I had to rank what I think will be the top ten domestic grocers mm. this summer, and I did put uh, Guardians number one. It was a close call between that and Despicable Me three. Interesting, but yeah, I I mean I think the first film made three hundred around three hundred thirty three or uh, million dollars. Yeah. Domestic. I think this one could go as high as four forty four, and then basically do a thirty. Oh yeah, I mean financially, increase. I think it's going to be a success. I think it that's well, that's going to be inherent. That's, that's the case, but I, th- I I do think it's going to do uh, much better than the first film, mm. even though. From a creative standpoint, I did not enjoy it as much. So what no. were your problems with the movie? And and spoiler alert right now, yeah. uh, if you haven't so seen just, Guardians. Just be aware of this. Um, I mean, I won't, I won't do, do too many spoilers. For me, it was kind of, it felt a little bit like it was a tick sheet of what people like from the first movie. Mm-hmm. And then make it bigger. Right. So it was like we like almost too big. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's the problem. I mean, I, I I'm not afraid of a film that goes on an epic scale. I actually really enjoy that, but I just think that they expanded this too much. I think some of the characters they became a bit too much by the numbers. Um, where it was like, we like Drax being funny, let's do more Drax. We like Groot, let's have baby Groot, let's have a lot more baby Groot. Um, le- you know, I, I love the way that they actually um, increased the presence of um, uh, Michael Rooker's character. Um, Yandu was great. Yeah. He, he was probably my favorite one, which is why I was shocked there was no Funko Pop toy for him. Like, yeah. Literally, they have one for everybody, including the so good. whatever face. Um, I think uh, Sly Stallone was wasted. To- what is he doing? He in was this movie? Ju- It could have been anybody. Um, Kurt Russell, for me, was underwhelming. Yep. Um, I was really disappointed with that. I thought he just, it just. I like the character. I like where he was in the story. It just didn't pop for me. Um, I but, love the opening, though, where he's younger. Yeah, no, absolutely. That really, was, really that good. Cool. And that, that, to me, kind of made the fact that he was underwhelming through the rest of the film. was It, it pained me more. But I, I was Chris Pratt, I just kind of felt that he was walking through this. He has nothing I to do just, in this movie. It's, no, it's a complete it was waste. Weird. Uh, uh, th- okay, Guardians 2... The women the, I thought the, were the wasted. Fun, uh, just I love the, Mantis. I uh, yeah. love the addition of Mantis. Yeah. I love Drax and Rocket. Yep. I loved Baby Groot, and I loved Yondu. Yep. The problem is that none of these people are the leads of the film. Mm. The two leads are Star-Lord and Gamora, and yep. they are saddled with this lame family soap opera crap where he, uh, you know, it, he's, it's trying to, you know, uh, be reunited with his father, mm. uh, and he's angry about his mother and and then Gamora is having a sibling rivalry with her sister that was it was nonsense yeah all of it was nonsense it was stupid there's also the, i mean th- there's one thing that really appealed about the first film was the, the the use of retro ideas so things from the 80s 90s 70s that to me was hammered home so much in this whether it's gadgets mm. references etc cetera, etc cetera. it just it just felt ham-fisted and no, knowing the work of James Gunn and how much the cast really feel about this nerdy retro stuff. It just didn't feel like that was their work. It felt like it was shoehorned in from to, some other angle. To me, the, um, the Guardians of the Galaxy guard the galaxy. Like, I want to yeah. just see them. Here's a bad guy. Here You have to stop the bad guy mm. from taking over the universe or yeah. whatever. 
the end. Uh, you know, like I get I get what they were going for with the family stuff and trying to make the the characters deeper and explore them a little bit more. But, uh, but I, do, I don't think it worked. I don't think it's to James me Gunn's by strength. by that attempt to make them deeper. I think it actually worked the other way. It just felt I felt less invested in the characters in this one than I did in the first one. I just didn't have that connection. The action sequences stunning, breathtaking. I love and the spectacular. opening. The, that but opening again, scene. they felt kind of vapid for me. They just I love the, the Yandu one where the, the yeah that's a really good one. But around. the rest, it just felt like they were kind of there you, i think sometimes you can give too much to me when it comes to effects the, i noticed very much in this film um between the bits that were obviously shot on a, a hard set and the bits that were then in completely computer generated mm -hmm. for me they just felt a little bit separate there wasn't the flow with the first film where it all felt kind of connected it just felt like this is what we shot on a set this is cgi this it just felt a little bit disconnected it, it lacked that element of believ well, because believability all, all the, it's not the news but it's... go off on their own journey and and it's they're so rarely yeah. like a team working together uh, everyone it's I mean, just I, like a movie full of subplots which is i guess how people describe the empire strikes back but this is always difficult obviously we now know that there's going to be a guardians 3 we, we kind of knew that originally but this is the, it's something that's a problem with a lot of franchises is when you're a bridge movie when you're too when you're the middle child in a franchise you become that bridge movie you become carrying on from the first movie and setting stuff up for the third movie or in the case of marvel other things within the franchise and i think the attempt to do that has been to the detriment of guardians of the galaxy 2 now don't get me wrong i did enjoy it it's fun and it's a film that you should see you will have fun with this movie it just didn't it it felt like a box ticker for me this is, rather than a, something that had the creativity. It's not no, a it's Suicide not a bad movie. Squad or a Batman no, the Superman. No, 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 it's, it's, not it's a mess. far from a bad movie. It's just, you know, the first film created these higher expectations, and now this second film has to live with well, it, and it doesn't meet them. Well, this is something we discussed after we saw the movie. I mean, this is a thing that Marvel do. The, the bar is set so high with Marvel movies now that it's difficult to... Is it? it? To me, yeah, it's I not a high bar. I think for, for for this kind of blockbuster, I think certainly with with characters and with spectacle, the bar is set pretty high because they tend to deliver. And I, this, to me, it was just it was below that. But you know, uh, below <laughs> below the bar, Marvel movie is still a lot better than a lot of other movies that enter theaters. <laughs> so you know, I, but, I mean, there's certain things. There's a cameo in this well, to do with I won't spoil it, but to do with Star Lord um, uh, when, when he was originally you know imagining who his father was. That cameo, I literally, I wanted to, to rip my dick off and hit somebody with it. It was so fucking bad. The Pac-Man moment, I thought, was that bad. Was bad. Sorry, that was bad. That was bad. There's a Howard, we all know there's a Howard the Duck um, appearance the, in the this. The thing I just wanted to say is that <sighs> just, I loved getting out of that screening. People were tweeting about how emotional it was. What a tear <laughs> didn't get of that. an ending. Did not get that. Are we fucking, are you guys fucking kidding me? Yeah. You're film critics? Did you see Manchester by the Sea? Was that a tearjerker? Like, I don't understand. I cry at movies all the time. This is not. This is not an emotional movie. It's not an emotional movie. Give me For a me, it was break. devoid of emotion. The first one, it touched me. Um, but this one, it didn't move me in that way at all. We're going to move it along yeah, because okay. Ant-Man remains the greatest Marvel movie. Yeah. Ant-Man's fucking brilliant. Sorry. It's it superb, is. but yeah. So, uh, all right, I agree well, you, with you, on that. you pick what's next. Okay, let's run through a few things. Uh, okay, I had a couple of scoops this week. Tell us. Um, I was on the red carpet for E News this week. Ooh, I know fancy. you're a big fan. I know you just signed a deal with them. I have signed a deal with E News. Look yes, I that. have um, as a, as a producer. Um, <clears throat> so, a great bunch of people there. Um, I was on the red carpet at, at a family event on Sunday, and Jordana Brewster. Uh, was Ooh, one of the people who attended. I love her. Uh, she's awesome. She's lovely. I've interviewed her many, many times over the franchise. Obviously, she's not in uh, Fate of the Furious, um, the, the, the current film, which is doing amazingly well at the box office. Um, but I did ask her. Obviously, there's there's been talk and there's been confirmation of the um, the the Rock spinoff with yep. Jason Statham, and it kind of made it. It made me think. Um, wouldn't it be good? There's so many women in the franchise now. Maybe nine would be good to be a jumping off point for a the women of the franchise to, to make a, a a female strong female and, of the furious and, movie and, and this would be who michelle rodriguez and jordana, and jordana brewster? brewster yeah come on simon this is about, it's about as good as your john yeah. no idea. but seriously but no they actually had discussions she doesn't even about it. race J jordana brewster like she's gonna learn she's gonna learn 
Um, but yeah, so they apparently they have actually had conversations about the possibility um, of having a, a, a female um, Fast and the Furious movie. Have they really had the conversations, or did she just like basically hit Donna Langley on the elbow at a premiere and be like, "Hey, we should do a female no, no, one"? No, no, like, she, yeah, yeah. Michelle Rodriguez, other people. They they have seriously had conversations about maybe we should do this. And you know what? I could, I could, I could be on board with that. It's very testosterone-y, the Fast and Furious thing. That would be good. And also, even though it's doing great guns, I think it would be really good. The female response to the, to the most recent movie has not been as strong as it has to the previous film. So I think that might be good. Come on, Helen Mirren, Charlize Theron. Come on. You're, you're, you're killing Jason me. Jason Statham in drag. I'm on board with that one. I, I, I don't see this movie happening. Uh, don't don't rile up the viewers. You're, you're giving them false hope. I think well, it's 2020. I think we're going to see it. Yeah. Female and the Furious. Yeah. Uh, also, I had a chat with the... <laughs> Seriously, I told her that, and she liked the idea. So okay. she liked the title. She well, liked my alliteration. I hope you get the writing job. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, so also I spoke to the director of uh, Rings, one of the possibly worst horror films of the year, unfortunately. Um, PG-13. Uh, and obviously he's exec producing The Crow. I know you love The Crow. Yeah. Uh, pushing for an R rating with that movie. They're very much going for that. Which, uh, to me, would be kind of a given. But you know how studios can be. They're like, eh, let's maybe make it a bit of a wider audience. But I would be... It's good to know, right? Uh, the- I think The Crow was always going to be R-rated, buddy. It's an R-rated original... Yes. Uh, yeah, but you know how studios can be. I mean, Rings was originally when that was touted, that was going to be like a like the previous two films. That was going to be a. I just an love it, like a, a, F. Javier Gutierrez. This dude's not involved in this movie. He's an executive producer. Why? Because he was attached to direct at one he point, was and then to they're direct. saying, "Listen, we're we're getting rid of you, but we'll give you an EP credit." This dude is not making decisions. Trust me. But you're happy about it, pushing for an R rating, right? I am happy because the original was an R rating, and I always figured that this one would be too. Well, then, Jason I Momoa, will take that as a happy. Yeah, Jason Momoa is, would not be a PG thirteen crow. No, he wouldn't. He wouldn't agree to do that. Forget you, man. Uh, what was the Mike Myers thing you mentioned? Uh, yeah, um, Austin Powers four. Um, obviously, Mike Myers is making something of a comeback right now. He's created a new character to front the Gong Show, which is coming back to TV. That's crazy. In the US. That photo of him, I didn't even recognize. It's really him. weird. It's really, really weird. Yes. Um, yeah. But, I mean, do you know what? I'm actually really happy to have Mike Myers back. Me too. I'm genuinely I don't care really how happy. we get him. Exactly. I'll I, I, I absolutely show. love Mike Myers. Um, I'm with you. So, Austin Powers 4. I mean, it's been a while since the last film came out. What is it, like 12, 13 years? It's well over a decade now. Too long. Yeah, too long. I would have too long, my to friend. see Austin I recently Powers 4, 5, and 6 already. I recently rewatched those three movies, and fuck me, they're good. Yeah. They well, are so the, funny. The first two. The third one... It's not as good, but you know what? It's still... It's better than Zoolander it's better than a, It's better than a lot of movies that You're are right. comedy movies those that are put first in the studios Austin right Powers now. Movies are great. Um, but yeah, so he's... It, nothing is signed and sealed, um... But, you know, he, he is, he'd be interested in doing it. He says we'll just have to wait and see. I know having spoken to um, Jay Roach a couple of months ago, they, they are having conversations. They have thrown a lot of ideas around. They do, they're not short of ideas about what to do with, with Austin Powers. Um, so everybody is kind of keen to do it. It's just really a case of making it work, which is good. Let me ask you this. Do you yeah. think Austin Powers could work without Mike Myers? Could no. they recast Austin no. Powers? I don't want someone else's Austin Powers. I want mm-hmm. Mike Myers. Yeah. Do you know, it's just... I always, I always wish that there was a Wayne's World 3. They may be too old for it now. Maybe well, more. again, I spoke to Penelope Spheris about this a couple of months ago, because it was the, the 25th anniversary of Wayne's World. And there have been plenty of ideas about what to do with Wayne's World. And basically, the, the, the premise would be that it would be uh, Wayne and Garth, it would be their, they would be in it, but it would be their kids who were the, the new guys. They'd be effectively YouTubers. Oh, interesting. Which would work. Which would that be, is interesting. That would be fun. Um, but I think Wayne's World Two for me, it was it was as far as comedy sequels go, it was it was not great, but it was not shit. I love Wayne's World Two. That I, movie gets a I bad like rap. That Same film. with Ghostbusters Two. Yeah, um, it's it's often overlooked, but I, I mean. I, that I'm less interested in ben than Austin I am Powers an Austin 4. Powers 4. What, where, where would Bill and Ted 3 fall on that spectrum for you? <laughs> Somewhere in the middle. Okay. I mean, I, I mean, I, I kind of, I want to see Bill and Ted 3, but I can't help feeling that it might suck. Yeah. Well, there's just such an imbalance But I do want to see there. it. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm very torn with that one. Yeah. Uh, also, talking of sequels um, on reboots, I spoke to John Badham this week. 
Ooh. Yeah. Who's made some? If you you think, oh, eh, jump at him. You look at his resume. He was throwing some, some great movies back in the day. Kick-ass movies. Um, I was talking about the, the Short Circuit uh, reboot that has been spoken about for many, many years. Um, he will not be involved in it, but he does endorse it. He thinks a reboot would be a really good idea. Um, I love Short Circuit. Yeah, they were working on a remake. With, they, with they've the, been working it was, on it for a long, it was long Tim time. Hill. Well, yeah. it's over at the Weinstein Company, you know. So. But he's behind it. He thinks it's a good idea. I thought he would think it would be a terrible idea, but he's behind it. I mean, Short Circuit 2 was not a great movie. That was not a great movie, and it was also a little bit racist. Who would you um, want to voice Johnny Five? Kevin Hart? Uh, Josh Gad. All right, let's segue. <laughs> I thought that would work quite nice. I did have a Kevin Hart segue. Um, we, had, we have Josh Gad segue, too. Kevin Hart on a segue. Where do That's we sign? That's a movie. Okay. Greenlight okay, it. Doing it. Yeah, great. All right, no, we do have Kevin Hart and Josh Gad things. So do. uh, I, I don't know if I brought this up on the show with Brienne last week. I don't think uh, so. I think that I did, and she just hadn't seen the movie, and we moved on real quickly. But Kevin Hart is going to star in a, in a remake of The Great Outdoors. Yes. Which I love. It's one of my favorite 80s comedies. I just, of all the John Hughes movies, that's probably in the lower end of my favorite John Hughes mm-hmm. movies. But I would like, who would you like to see star opposite Kevin Hart in that? Because obviously it was Aykroyd and Candy in the original. You, you, want, you want to know? I'm going to throw one out here right now. You ready? Okay, yeah. James Corden. Do you know what? That idea is not shit. Thank you. Top of my head, I, right there. I like that idea. James Corden and Kevin Hart camping. Do you see what I was thinking on, along a similar vine? I was thinking um, Jimmy Fallon. That's really weird that we were both thinking of fucking Yeah, late it's night really hosts. weird, isn't it? <laughs> yes. But I was I was thinking the other day. I mean, Jimmy Fallon he hasn't had a huge amount of success in movies. He's done okay, mm-hmm. but it has been a while since he's done a movie. And I'm just thinking, he does have a deal with Universal as well. And I'm assuming this is going to be a, a a Universal, perhaps Paramount. This... Paramount was originally Great Outdoors. Was it? Yeah, I, I think, think it's it Universal was. now. But either, yeah. either way, uh, I know that the Jimmy, house from the Jimmy Great Fallon's Outdoors is on the back. Not a great lot. actor. That's the thing. The ta- taxi and fever pitch and mm, I don't know about that one. His comedic timing though is pretty sweet. For Pratt Falls, he'd be funny, but I do like James Corden. I could I see, think that would be really really I good. I could see Channing Tatum too. Channing, Channing Tatum, Tatum and, would be and amazing. Kevin Hart. Or, mm, yeah, maybe. Channing Tatum would be great. Um, Josh Gad again. I I thought Josh Gad originally would be really really good. Josh Gad and Kevin Hart. Well, they did. Yeah. they already did a movie together. They did. Uh, speaking of Josh Gad. Hmm. That little fucking trickster. <laughs> I love Damn Josh it. Gad. He yeah. took to Twitter this week and dropped a photo of the penguin. Nowadays, when, when uh, any celebrity puts a photo of mm-hmm. a comic book panel, we, the internet, uh, are instructed we to, assume, lose, lose ourselves. to assume that that is how the casting would be announced. Yeah. Uh, and so there was a lot of uh, discussion this week about Josh Gad uh, maybe as the Penguin in the DC universe. Mm-hmm. We don't know what movie that would be. Gotham City Sirens or Nightwing or Batgirl or who fucking knows because there's a million of these movies. Yep. Um, I think it would be great. I, I love Josh Gad. I, I think he would make a really good Penguin. Mm-hmm. But this is non-news, right? Yeah. I, for me, my big concern about Josh Gad in Hollywood right now is he's the new Jack Black. It, yeah, it's like if you if you need someone who is a little bit chubby, a little bit quirky, a little bit like can pull faces, he's that guy now where Jack Black was like ten years ago, and he's better than that. Josh Gad is amazing. Yeah, I, I think don't Josh fall Gad in might be a to chubby actor. buddy trap because that would be selling himself short. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, well, listen, I love the Penguin. Yeah. From Batman Returns. He would be awesome. And if you couldn't, I mean, obviously you're not going to get Danny DeVito. You're going to uh, have yep. to recast. I just, yeah, I love that character. And, and um, maybe it's just the way Tim Burton designed him. But I think he would be really cool to see on the screen again. Batman Returns is one of my favorite movies of all time. Yeah. I love that movie so much. Amazing. It's so dark. Um, okay. Uh, so Kevin Hart and the Great Outdoors. Uh, let's talk about this. Obviously, this time last week when I was uh, on secret assignment in Hawaii. Mm-hmm. Um there was a kind of a, a shitball festival that kind of collapsed. Ah, yes, the fire on the same festival. day. Yes, on the same day was announced that Seth Rogen and the Lonely Island guys are doing a movie that just happens to be about a music festival that turns to shit. Let now, me ask you: Do you yeah. think that that was legit? No, 
I don't know. I mean, I'm just wondering whether or not they did have the idea before they saw it. Or yeah. whether they're on Twitter going like, this sounds like a clusterfuck we can have some really good exactly. comedic T- timing with. This felt like an elbow to Seth Rogen from, from, like, what? from yeah. to everybody else being like, well, we've actually been working on something. So uh, actually, don't bother writing about this fire Festival yeah. thing. Mine, no, dibs, every, dibs, right. shotgun, that's all, shotgun. That's honestly what it felt like. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> no, were you really? Mm-hmm. I don't... I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call creative bullshit on that one. I think it will happen, and I think there's lots of stuff they could do with it. But I was just like, I'm, I'm sorry, I think you've just seen surpri- that on Twitter. I'm like, Lonely Island doing another music-based movie after Popstar, which oh, was I loved, great. I love that movie. Great movie, but if you haven't seen no it, business. Seriously, if you haven't seen that movie this weekend, do it. Buy it, rent it, yeah, stream Popstar's it. Yeah, a fucking blast. Do not illegally download it. But like, if you're Lonely it, Island, how on earth are you making another movie Michael Bolton's, like that? Michael Bolton's on board. Come on. By, oh, do that. Did you see the Michael Bolton like Valentine's Day special on Netflix? I did not. It was unwatchable. Okay. I, I mean, he's, yeah, I'm not surprised. He, he's good for like a four minute yeah. sketch or something yeah. to watch a 75 minute special. <laughs> it, was, it was terrifying. Um, yeah, if I'm looking for some sexy time, Michael I like Bolton the idea. is not. Something I like the I want idea of the see. Seth Rogen Lonely Island movie in, in a, I love in the a idea. S- festival that goes horribly wrong. I mean, I like this is the end. I enjoy. I like that movie. Of course, yeah. But also because it had Backstreet Boys at the end, and I love Backstreet Boys. Yeah, how so. random. Uh, man, but, who who goes to these festivals though? Like, uh, you couldn't get me even if it was free to go to one of these fucking festivals. A holes. Yeah, really. Yeah, I mean, basically I, I everyone would, who bought a ticket pretty much deserved what they got. I would rather. I would rather. <laughs> I'd rather do anything than go to a festival. Yeah, I was going to be gross, but I'm just... Even, like, I'm even just, like a Coachella, like something I know Coachella. is run smoothly and all Seriously. that stuff. Coachella is, Coachella is basically a desert full of people that I try to Douche fucking bags. avoid right. in Los Angeles yeah. day in, day out. Having um, said that, I'm going to, to, to Catalina this weekend. Ooh. Fucking Catalina wine mixer. The wine mixer, bro. Yeah. <clears throat> this weekend, so I'm, I'm sure that will be an island of a-holes, but uh, it should be also fun. Akiva Goldsman. Yeah. Remaking Firestarter. This was announced out of the Overlook Film Festival. Yeah. Uh, where Akiva's uh, mm-hmm. movie Stephanie, a Blumhouse production, debuted. Um, I don't know about Akiva Goldsman. I have mixed thoughts on him, but I like the idea of a Firestarter remake. I, I think that is absolutely a movie that can be remade and improved upon. Uh, and I going think back get to, the right to kid, Stephen King adaptations, well, King is still hot right now. It's it's a strong one. Maybe they're going to do um, Pet Cemetery again, or they they Grey were they were trying shift. to do they were. Uh, Pet Cemetery. Yeah. Um, Edward Furlong's available if they want to. He's still alive, right? <laughs> <laughs> just, just checking. I, by the way, I love how closely Edward <laughs> Furlong is associated with that franchise, even though he was only a number two. It's yeah. not like he was the star of Pet Cemetery. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, Pet he, Cemetery he does good too. Twos. Matt Mary Lambert. Yes, he does. He does good twos. He too. Hey, good work on your number twos, Edward Furlong. Who is it, it, okay? So mm. I don't know if it would have to be a little girl, or if they could make the fire starter a little boy. But is there any child actor that you would like to see as the fire starter? No, I'll tell you who I would like to see <clears throat> is Ansel Elgort. If you switch it up, make it a guy, and have him. He's too old. Do you think he is? Yeah. I fucking loved him in the Carrie remake with Chloe Grace Moretz. What? I thought he was fucking brilliant in that. I loved him in that. Are you fucking kidding me No, 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 seriously. I I love... You say Ansel Elgort was brilliant in the Carrie remake. Yeah. I I loved it. Seriously. He was the high point of that movie for me. He made that movie. Wow. And Julianne Moore, who I totally fucking love. So. So, So, like, in the fall... When you're like, you know, Casey Affleck is brilliant in Manchester by the Sea Part 2 or whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go back to this Ansel Elgort was brilliant. In I'm not Harry saying thing. it was I'm an Oscar winning performance. I'm saying in that movie, I fucking loved him. Hey, you come are, on. I love Steve Gutenberg in the crazy. Police Academy movies. Doesn't mean that shit should be awarded. I just think any uh, goals. Backdraft from the early 90s remains yeah. the best movie about fire. Uh, I it am does. looking forward to Granite Mountain. You do realize that now BuzzFeed fall. are going to do a five fire-based movies that you need to see. Yeah, like anyone from BuzzFeed could fucking listen to this podcast. <laughs> uh, Granite Mountain comes out this fall, yeah. hopefully with Miles Teller. That mm-hmm. could take the mantle. Uh, that's supposed to be a pretty great fire movie. Could be. A fire starter. Yeah. Twisted a lot fire of potential starter. there. 
Yeah. Twisted fire starter. I'm a starter, fire starter. starter, starter a twisted starter. fire starter. Uh, Chan Salerno, mm-hmm. who is writing the Avatar sequels with James Cameron, yep. he has been hired to write a Gears of War movie. Simon, I've never played this game. No. Why should I care? Uh, I don't care. Quite literally. Yeah, they've been um, trying to make game, this movie movies. I've been burnt so many times by games movies that I think could really be so good. Hollywood keeps making them, and I've yet to see one. Uh, yeah. I'm kind of a sucker for the Resident Evil franchise. <laughs> Even though you are a sucker, <laughs> yeah. I, I, but the third one, I, I did genuinely love. Did you see love. Assassin's Creed? <laughs> no, neither did I. It was on a Thank plane. You. It was on Thank a plane you. to Hawaii, and everyone was like, "Assassin's Creed." Yeah, fuck that shit. No, scroll, scroll past. No, no. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what Creed. Gears of War is even about. What is the story? Uh, there's some war. There's some gears. Can I uh, interject? Yes, yeah, yes, of course. please. Yeah, I've actually played this series. And okay. In my opinion, it's like, um, it's like for the Brodies of the video game world. It's kind of like meatless jockeys just going around shooting things in cover, and it's it's not like extremely smart. So in a sense, I could see how that would work because mm-hmm. it would draw in that crowd <laughs> and be like, "Yeah, I'll go watch Gears of War." Like all the diehard fans that have like the tattoos of Gears of War and whatnot. Um, but it, yeah, it's not that great of a franchise. Okay, here's opinion. here's what they should do then with Gears of War. It should be basically um, overweight middle-aged virgins sitting in their basements. They should I do just, it from none, that angle. None of this stuff appeals to me. Gears of War, Metal Gear Solid, Call of Duty, uh, Halo. No, no. Was, the only uh, thing I want to see is a Twisted Metal Hollywood, movie. No, Hollywood. I would see Twisted Metal and I would see Grand Theft Auto. It's just, I mean, for me, the, the ideal kind of gaming movie is what we saw with Tom Cruise is with... Um, In Edge of Tomorrow? Uh, yeah, Edge of Tomorrow. Mm-hmm. That, to me, is a great idea of a kind of movie that is a altered reality video game kind of scenario. Hollywood, for some reason, does not have the ability to make these games into decent movies. I don't know why, because the creativity is there, the technology is there, the ideas are there, but they just can't even engage the audience that they're going part, for in these part films. Part of it is I think that the, in, the video game companies interject themselves a little bit too much. Like, uh, you know, uh, why haven't we seen a Splinter Cell movie? Uh, well, they've think, tried to I make that with Tom Hardy right. and they're like Uncharted and, and all these other ones that they just... But nobody's genuinely excited about it. Even games fans are like, these films are shit. Yeah, I'm not... They just can't it's, do it's it. Not, they should stop with this. My, uh... But Hollywood persists in making these movies. <laughs> when your target audience doesn't want to get off their asses and go and see these movies, that should tell you something. What movie are they not making, Simon? Neil Blomkamp's Alien. They are not making Alien 5. Yes. It's dead. It is dead. For all which those people is... who ever thought it was going to happen. Well, yeah, but, I mean, everybody appears to think that was going to happen. Like, you know, Sigourney Weaver, and I, I spoke to Michael Bean last year. What did year. I tell you? What is, the, what is the number one rule in terms of journalism? Don't eat yellow snow. Don't believe actors. Yes. They don't know what they're talking about. But apparently, yeah, so so this thing that's been, uh, he's been, you know, tweeting about it and concept art and stuff like that. It, apparently Ridley Scott says that this is not, this isn't, there's no script, this is not going to happen, this is dead. And do you know what? I think if Alien Covenant does well, which I think it, it will do, you're seeing it tonight? Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I think, uh, you know, I, I don't think there's room for that. We don't, we also, even though I would like to see that movie, I don't think we need parallel universes of Alien movies, we, as much as I would enjoy that We never needed film. this movie. This was, uh, this always felt like a social media campaign to, like, interject yourself into the Alien franchise. Yeah. Neil Blomkamp. Give it a rest, bro. Move on. Do something else. Something that is happening, though, um, and this is a story that I've actually sat on for for about two months, um, the Happy Time Murders. Yeah, Melissa McCarthy. Yeah, he's going to star in the lead. Um, She's going to be the detective in this. I hope this happens because I've always liked this premise. They've been talking to her for a long time about this. I like the idea. I just, I I like it. Yeah. But. Let's acknowledge the fact that this is one of those movies that seems to get a new star each year, yeah. always around Cannes, trying to drum up international sales and but all that bullshit. Brian Henson believes in this. STX really believe in this. And they. I think this could, with Brian, Melissa McCarthy, Brian I think Brian Henson could, believes in this. Of course Seriously, he it's, yeah, but it's, <laughs> he gets yeah, to but build a whole bunch of puppets. He's the first studio. guy to admit that, you know, sometimes they will do things that he's like, yeah, great, it's a thing. Um, but this is something, this is a real pet project of his that's been going on for decades. Yeah, it's been um, around for a, a long, long, time. long time. I hope it comes together. I think that she is the right fit. Jamie Foxx did not strike me <laughs> no. as the right fit. No. But also, can I just say, if you haven't watched Nobody's, Melissa Carthy's TV show, um, oh. 
It is absolute genius. And if you want to know about the inner workings of the Hollywood system, it's a really funny show that really works well with that. So I, I recommend Nobody's. We've got about five minutes left okay. in the show. Uh, a They're... Bad Mom's Christmas is dropping in November. Yeah, they got okay. So they got Susan Sarandon, Cheryl yeah. Hines, and Christine Baranski. Yeah. Now Susan Sarandon is going to play uh, Catherine Hahn's mom. Mm -hmm. I kind I, I kind of like that. Yeah. I can totally see that. Cheryl Hines is going to play Kristen Bell's yep. mom, and I can definitely see that. Christine Baranski is going to play Mila Kunis's mom, and I got to say, I don't see this at all. But I do love her. She's brilliant. Sure, I, she is. I want to see all of these older ladies just, and this again goes for Melissa McCarthy in Happy Time, Happy Time Murders, just swearing their asses off. Nothing tickles me more than ladies swearing creatively. I absolutely—it's one of the reasons I love Bad Moms. For it was birthday, so I'm going to hire fun. a bunch of women just to come, you just, know, approach just you at be dinner obscene. and just yell, no, yell things at you. I think it's brilliant. I mean, I. For the Bad Mom sequel, I would rather have this just been a Bad Mom sequel rather than a holiday movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those, love, to me... It's like, <sighs> Christmas is the Super Bowl for moms. That is uh, not true. No. That is not a thing. No, I. but to be honest with you, it's ladies swearing and being filthy. I mean, if you haven't seen Bad Moms, there's a scene in that where... Uh, Mila Kunis, uh, Catherine Hahn, uh, and Kristen Bell um, basically turn uh, Mila Kunis into a penis, and they they replicate masturbating a penis. It's fucking comedy gold. Comedy gold. Seriously, bad moms. You heard it's it here. From it's Simon one Thompson. of the funniest things I've seen in the last eighteen months. Of other ridiculous things on yeah. today on the show. <laughs> that is true. Bad moms. Not a good movie. Not a good movie. Oh, it's funny. It's. I'm no. not saying it's Oscar-winning material. It's a funny movie. I'm not saying it's Oscar-winning material either. I'm saying it's not funny. It's not a good movie. <laughs> and this sequel, uh, God help them. Yeah. Uh, we talked about the, the Dark Tower trailer earlier. Uh, can I just say It Comes at Night was another trailer that dropped this week. Looks dope. Looks so, so sweet. Dope as fuck. Um, but also, let's touch on this. We, we discussed this um, before the show started. What is it at the moment with these, on trailers online, there's a pre-roll of a bit of the trailer oh yeah they did where that did that Dark trend Tower. come from and can we stop it so actually someone someone on twitter who works for sony okay. uh, responded to me when we were having this discussion yeah. clearly uh trying to defend the dark tower trailer that was going to be coming the next day that right. featured it um and they were just saying that that it doesn't count as a view here, here's what pissed me off about this. I know we only have two minutes. Uh, it doesn't count as a view mm. unless you watch a certain number of seconds. So let's say that's five seconds or ten seconds, which is why they do the the pre-roll before the trailer actually starts. Right. So to me, it's all about goosing their numbers rather than actually caring about the people who are going to watch it. Because nobody likes this. Who actually enjoys it's that? It's jarring. Because you're like, oh, try right. No. You click on something oh. you're supposed to no. ease your way is into a story. Oh, okay. Instead, it's like boom, 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 no. boom, boom, boom. Yeah, and now we start. It's like, hey, trailer. Not I'm, a not a fan. It's just yeah. I don't like this trend. Yeah, care it about grates. the people who are actually watching these trailers, not the numbers that. And none of these stories even matter anymore when deadlines like, well, this is the biggest uh, trailer launch. You know, eighteen million views in twenty four hours. Who I'm, fucking cares? I mean, in the chat, director Juice Black is saying the pre roll is to stop you skipping the advert. No, I know what the point is. I'm just saying it's really fucking annoying. Who would skip the advert? I clicked on the advert to watch it. Yeah. So I, you think if I don't see the money shots in the first five seconds, I'm leaving? I don't understand studios. I don't understand just, people. I, I don't understand anything trend. anymore. Don't uh, don't do that. We're, uh, th that's basically all the time we have. I'm gonna uh, take us uh, in, in thirty seconds okay, through cool. everything that we missed. Jeremy Renner playing Doc Holliday. Yeah. Uh, Shia LaBeouf coaching a Down syndrome wrestler in the Peanut Butter Falcon. Uh, Craig Johnson, who did Skeleton Twins, is doing The Art of Fielding. Uh, yep. That's based on a huge book. Yep. Dr. Doolittle moved to avoid Star Wars 9. Mm -hmm. uh, Fox and Simon Kinberg picked up Andy Weir's new book, uh, Artemis. I saw that, yeah. Um, Brian De Palma got Nikolai Coster Waldo and Christina Hendricks for his new movie. Mm -hmm. And Liam Hemsworth doing this movie, Killer Man, from the director of Cash Only, which I uh, highly suggest you see. And Aquaman started filming this week. 
Congratulations to Aquaman. Uh, that'll do it for me, the movie press this week. Simon, where can the good folks find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter, at Showbiz Simon, Instagram, at Showbiz Simon. I also have a Facebook page. This is Simon Thompson. And I am Jeff Snyder, editor in chief of the tracking board, tracking hyphen board.com, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. uh, Twitter and Instagram, at The Insnyder. Thank you, as always, for yes. watching the Popcorn Talk Network. Make sure to rate, comment, subscribe, and tell your friends. Spread tell the word. everybody yeah. that you know. Write it on bathroom stalls. Guys, you just met. <laughs> The movie press. Yeah. Uh, enjoy, Gar- enjoy Guardians of the Galaxy <laughs> yeah. weekend. Do you go and see it? Yes. From producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, Christian Harloff, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of its owners or principals.